Hello, everyone. Let's start by highlighting what Bill Gates once said. Bill Gates said that if your business is not on the internet, then your business will be out of business. Welcome to this webinar and thank you for joining me today. This is Aya Fayyad, a graduate of the American University of Sharjah and a legal tech specialist. I'm also a part of a very innovative initiative called Case Engine. Case Engine is a fast growing bilingual legal workflow automation system. It's headquartered in Dubai, the United Arab Emirates. Now let's start by trying to define what a virtual law firm is. I mean, if you go on Google or elsewhere, you're going to find tons and tons of definitions. But for the sake of this webinar, the definition that I chose and I liked and thought was comprehensive is that a virtual law firm is really all about the client's experience. I mean, it's a law firm, but it's also web-based. It has virtual interaction and it's a, it's a lot of other things. It is convenient, it is automated, it's flexible, it's paperless, and of course, it's tech-driven. Now, although the full virtual law firm model is still not here in the MENA region's market, or it's not conquering at least, we're hoping that it will be nourished in the upcoming years. And hence, for now, the model that we will be speaking about, and it is the model that we see already in the MENA region's market, is the quasi or hybrid virtual law firm. So what is a quasi or a, or a, what is a, quasi or a hybrid virtual law firm? It is a law firm, okay, but it's not just a normal law firm. It's basically having a bit of both words. It is having the physical, traditional bricks and mortar office, but also having a virtual component of your office as well. And this way, whether your clients happen to be thousands and thousands of kilometers away, or they're your next door neighbor, you will be able to serve them both equally. And the whole, the, the whole virtual law firm, it's not something super new, and that's why nourishing it in the MENA region is a must. I mean, the first virtual law firm was established and recorded in 1996, so in 24 years ago, uh, Mr. Andrew Woolley has established the first virtual law firm called Woolley & Co. Okay. Now, um, I'm sorry, before we proceed, I'm getting a lot of uh, questions that other people are hoping that this was in Arabic. So let me just uh, say a disclaimer. This webinar will be fully in English, but we apologize uh, for everyone who wanted it to be in Arabic. And we promise that this is just going to be the first webinar from many, many other webinars. So maybe the next webinar will be in Arabic and then the one after next will be in a third different language uh, because we're trying to um, highlight or talk about this topic and we will talk about it many times in different languages. Okay, now let's proceed uh, with the quasi or with the virtual law firm history. As I was saying, the first virtual law firm was established years and years ago in England, uh, which was called Willy & Co. And of course now, in the MENA region, and because of the novel coronavirus and pandemic, it's of no surprise that we need change, okay? And the pandemic and the coronavirus has already taught us new ways of conducting work, and it has set new normal. And especially in the legal field, it has set already new ways of doing things that the lawyers mm, have not fully comprehended yet. Okay, but also with that being said, the lawyers know that change is needed and they are already talking about legal tech, which was before maybe a bit of a taboo topic. So they are talking about legal tech, they are trying to find ways and better ways of doing work. And it's not just lawyers. I mean, here we see the courts in the UAE conducting hearings online and they've been doing that for a while and they haven't yet went back to the normal old ways of doing things. And I don't think they will after they have firsthand witnessed the advantages or the uh, benefits of doing so. And I mean, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, ruler of Dubai, said it when he said that the reality of work will change. The methods of work must change. The post-corona world will be different because it, and it will need different preparations because it will be different. So it's of no surprise already that, need, that change is needed and it's a given and it's a fact and we just need to come into terms that change is required and start doing something about it. And apart from the coronavirus or the pandemic, the ongoing pandemic, 
it's also of no surprise to lawyers that the clients and the clientele base has always been the ones driving the market change. And also we see evident differences between the older generations and the newer ones, such as Generation Z and the millennials. We see differences in the ways they do work, in their thought process, in their mindset, but also in the expectations. And because today's client's expectations has changed, your business model needs to change. I mean, if you want to stay relevant and at the forefront of your industry. So with all, with all that being said, it's also very important to highlight the uh, bigger picture or the motto of a virtual law firm, which is that when a client's when a client arrives with a new prospect, their prospect or needs need to be immediately addressed. And this is the whole point of a virtual law firm, or a quasi or hybrid virtual law firm as well. Now that I've spoken about what a virtual law firm is and a quasi and hybrid virtual law firm is, and also has, I think, set myself very, very clear, and I hope that you're all with me on it, the change is required and it is due. Now let's talk a little bit about some of the benefits of a virtual law firm. Of course, here in front of you is just a list of a bit of the benefits, because if we're going to start talking about the benefits of any technological tool, especially going virtual in a business, we will not end. It needs like a whole lot of another webinar series. But some of the benefits, and um, I think it's obvious from the um, name itself, that you can, you'll be able to conduct work, no matter you and your employees, no matter where you are, so no matter of the location, no matter what, which time zone you're in, and this will help you, of course, have wider geographical reach and increase your footprint. So now we can take in clientele and clients that's thousands and thousands of kilometers away and not just the ones that run around your same area or location or circle. And hence, you will have higher earning potential. And the higher earning potential would come also from as a consequence of cutting costs, the ability to cut costs, and also the ability to have flexible resource arrangement, you'll be able with the same capacity that you have now in your law firm or your legal department, you will be able to handle more cases and to take in more work than you could have previously. And of course, the whole minimal human errors plus attracting and retaining talents. And of course, there is tons, as I said, and tons of other benefits of it, but we will not go, uh, for the purpose of time, we will not go, we will not be going in depth of that. Now for the um, main <laughs> webinar subject, which is five steps of setting up a hybrid or a quasi virtual law firm. Now this list, or these five steps that I will be talking about, of course, they are not the only steps, and they are, there are much more steps, but they are, um, one can say that they are the basic five steps of setting up a hybrid virtual law firm. Now let's start with the first uh, step. Okay, the first step is having, okay, sorry, let me, okay, great. Okay, so the first step is having an interactive website. Think of it that way. Your website is your office, is your virtual office. So you want the visitor that's going into your website to understand from the very first few minutes what your service is all about, what you have to offer, what is unique in your place or in your firm or in your department or so on and so forth, especially, of course, this, this is applicable for law firms. So what is unique about your service? Any um, testimonials, any endorsements would be very important. And because the website, and because the website is your online representation, and it's not just that, I mean, a good, strong, user-friendly website with the right tools, the right design, um, you want a clean design, you want, uh, of course, things like catchy animations, uh, self-explanatory uh, images, good colors, um, easy, simple language, so you cannot just go and write your website, fill your website with SEO content, but being uh, be, like being very um, complicated language. No, you need it to be very simple, very clear, very straightforward, and you need proper infographics and so on and so forth. And a good, strong website with all these tools would, of course, drive your visitors to be leads 
and from there on to be potential clients, hopefully, and, and future clients. And that's why having an interactive website as well with a chatbot where someone would just go in and not have the need to check a number and then call. No, they can just ask anything on a chatbot. And we see that in a lot of websites nowadays. The next step or the next um, basic step of setting up a hybrid or a virtual law firm is having a cloud-based legal practice management software. Lawyers everywhere, and especially in a virtual firm, they are a quasi-virtual firm, they would need to be able to easily access the law firm data and the files. They need everything to be in one place, in one cloud, that is, of course, secure, that is backed up, and that they can easily access whenever they want. But of course, having all of the data in one place and in a secure cloud is never enough without having the interactive tools to actually use the data. So it's not enough to go on and go and work or go into business with a, with a portal that will store all your data in a cloud-based legal practice management software. No, you also need to make sure that they have what it takes for you to automate your workflow. They need to have things like time tracking, billing, um, exporting data. They need to have system maintenance. They need to have um, uh, generating. They need to be able to generate reports. Um, and with the billing comes the invoicing and so on and so forth. Now, the third step of setting up a hybrid or quasi-virtual law firm is the tools for communication. Now, maybe in this part, I'll talk about uh, the thing that I'm going to talk about, which is the video conferencing. It is now, like the reason why now video conferencing is said to be normal or a new normal, it's because of the pandemic. But I mean, the video conferencing tool has been there from, I guess, as long as I've been alive. And yet, no one really used it or, or the um, industries weren't really widely using the video conferencing tool as much as they do now. And this is due to the pandemic. And of course, the video conferencing has shown us the past couple of months how powerful of a tool it is, how strong of a tool it is. It's easily accessed. You can do it from anywhere and anytime as well. And a good video conferencing platform is very vital and very important if you want your business to go partially virtual. Because it will make everything easier from communicating internally and externally. And of course, it has a lot of benefits that I'm sure I'm not going to spend more time talking about it because I'm sure that we all firsthand witnessed it the past couple of months. The first step of setting up a virtual law firm, and to me, the most important and vital step, is to set up a trusted virtual network. I mean, because confidentiality is key, especially when it comes uh, when it comes to the legal uh, to the legal industry. It's very very important. Okay. So one might think, okay, like being online would have its risks, such as hacking and so on and so forth. I'm here to tell you no. I mean, the whole technological um, technological tools or the whole technological uh, platforms and tools and so on and so forth has been always um, they've been always doing better and they've been always developing themselves to be more secure. I mean, most of our financial transactions now happen online. With easiness and with um, and with complete privacy and complete trust. But with that being said, yes, lawyers and anyone who is planning to go quasi or hybrid virtual or go part partly uh, virtual need to do due diligence research on which portal or platform are they going to go in business with, because choosing a right platform. Of course, with the rigid security guidelines, with the international past security guidelines, it's very, very important. And also knowing things and knowing what to do and what not to do when you're working virtually is very important, such as a very basic thing would be not going uh, to a public place and connecting to their public Wi-Fi, but instead have your hotspot everywhere and have your private Wi-Fi with you everywhere. And this way, when you're accessing data and sensitive information or confidential documents for clients or so on and so forth, you'd be 100% secured and you would feel very confident while accessing them and working on them. So again, I cannot reiterate the importance of this point and the importance of choosing the right platform to go on virtual. Now, the fifth and the last basic step of setting up a virtual or hybrid or quasi-virtual law firm 
would be to get social and to start networking. I mean, this is not just when going virtual, but it's much easier when you're going virtual. Because as everything else, digital marketing now has a lot of tools that's not costly and that can be done online. I mean, as simple as the social media presence, your social media presence not to, need to be very important. Things like also um, going into uh, seminars or webinars and conducting ones will mark your name around the people of the same field. And also things like um, talking into talking when uh, talking in or taking places in conferences would be very important as well. And there's tons and tons of other things. You just need to literally get up, get social, and start networking. And that's it for the five um, basic uh, steps or five easy steps of setting up a hybrid or virtual law firm. And now um, I would like next to talk to you about something that is very, very, very dear to my heart. And not just because I am part of them. I'd like to talk about, I'd like to talk, uh, just a second. Yeah. I'd like to talk about um, very innovative initiative. And um, it is unique. It has a lot of features, but I'll get into the technicalities a bit later because I want to tell you something before. So first of all, Case Engine. What is Case Engine? As I said earlier, Case Engine is a fast growing bilingual legal workflow automation platform. Okay? It's headquartered here in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates. It is designed and developed to act to um, by expertise, of course, by team of expertise to serve the, the law firms and the in-house legal departments. So it's to serve both the law firms and the in-house legal departments. Okay. Now, um, let me tell you a little bit, as I said, a little bit more about what is Case Engine or what is the whole goal or main big aim of Case Engine before I get into the technicalities. So Case Engine or the team and the management behind Case Engine is not just there or did not just did not develop and design this portal or this platform to sell it to the law firms and legal departments and then leave. No, this is not what we're here for. We know and understand that this is only, and to us this is the only first step, and this is only for us to actually gain the da database that's needed to go on the next step, which is the second phase. So Case Engine is here with a two-phase initiative. Phase one, which is the current phase that we're currently in, that is the digitalization and the automation of work. But then the second phase and the bigger phase that we're looking to launch it in the near future is the artificial intelligence and the machine learning. And yes, as I said at the beginning, that the fully virtual law firm is not yet something that's nourished or not yet something that is there and set in the MENA region's market, but we are and we should go there. I mean, it's, it's, we cannot just hide or we cannot just um, pretend that it's not important or pretend that we can wait on it. No, we cannot. And that's why phase one is just as important as phase two, but it's only phase one. It's not the whole phase or the whole process. And as I was saying um, before I get into this slide, that the management and team of Case Engine is here to showcase to lawyers that there is a better way of doing the job. There is a more efficient way we are here to basically make sure that the lawyers and the people working in the legal field, whether they are working in a law firm, in the litig litigation part of a law firm, the corporate part of a law firm, or in an in-house legal department in any of the companies, we're here to showcase them how important and how beneficial and how strong the legal tech tool is to them and how much it will benefit them and how much it will be of use to them. And I know that I get very loud <laughs> and uh, when it comes to this, but because I cannot reiterate the importance of getting up and starting thinking of ways and start to implement. And we know that, that change is always difficult. And we also understand that um, for a lawyer who is, um, of course, super smart and always thinking of ways to solve very complicated issues, to just go on and go through the whole phase of changing, but we also made sure to make the portal very user-friendly, easy to use, and it was catered especially 
to optimize and to uh, for the optimal satisfaction of the lawyers and of the all the people that's working in the legal field. Now that I spoke a little bit about the main aim and goal and the two um, initiatives or the two phase, phases of Case Engine, let me talk to you about a bit of its technicalities. The point of Case Engine or the reason why Case Engine has automated all the um, administrative day-to-day -day redundant tasks is, is for lawyers to actually spend more time in the high value core legal work. So once again, we've automated or we have made sure that the redundant um, administrative tasks that can be done in a computer is done to give you more time and uh, to save your energy basically for you to do the high level, the, um, the much more uh, important uh, high value core legal work. And now with Case Engine, the, your whole office, okay, the point is for you to have your whole office in a virtual manner. And that again does not mean that you that we want you to close your office or, or, uh, or anything like that. No, because as I said, the fully virtual law firm is not yet there in the market. So the quasi or the hybrid, it's it is what's set. So having a physical office, having a bricks and mortar traditional office is important. Maybe having a smaller one, you know, just to reduce costs and 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 save your money. And then having the other half or the other bit of it online and virtually. And I will not go again on all the benefits that I've stated above. So it's just to have the best, the best of, of both words, basically. Now, going back to it, the, the point of Case Engine or what Case Engine is, uh, Case Engine's phase one is about, is for you to have your whole firm online. And your office, it, it can be in the form of a dashboard with all the legal matters, all your employees, all your clients, and all the tasks in one place. But now you might ask, for example, like, why Case Engine? So why there's, uh, we are aware that there, there are other competitors in the market, or we wouldn't like to call them competitors. We'd like to actually call them peers in the whole movement that we're all together trying to do or trying to, um, trying to um, achieve at the end of the day. But why Case Engine? It's because we are, uh, as I said, it's, uh, the portal is very, very user friendly, easily used, easily accessed. Um, I'd li I like when I use it, I think it's even easier than the easiest uh, social media platform that we currently all use. It's also user friendly. Um, you have your whole, uh, the, the whole workflow is automated. So what, is, what, what do I mean when I say the whole workflow is automated? I basically mean that your, like the tasks are passed on chronologically from one uh, employee to another without the need of any manual interaction. So when employee X is done with their task, automatically the system will send in the task or the continuation of the task chronologically to the other employee without any manual interaction. And of course, this is a very important feature because it's, it just automates the whole workflow and it, um, it also um, guarantees efficiency and it maximizes productivity for sure. We also happen to have a lot of other innovative features but the one feature that I did not speak of yet, and I think I was just leaving it as a surprise or something, it's one of the, I think, features that makes us definitely um, um, ahead in, our, in the market, is that our system is bilingual. And it's not just bilingual as in you can enter the data in two languages, no. I, by bilingual, I mean that, all, that most of the website's content and most of the website's entries is already pre-translated to, from Arabic to English and from, um, from English to Arabic. So it is bilingual. And we are always, of course, looking to add more features when, it, uh, when, it does, when, it, uh, when it's regarding anything, but especially when it comes to the translation, because we know that any law firm and the differences, there is always the language barrier between litigation and corporate or between the in-house legal departments or between also the uh, internal and the external and the clientele. And that's why we know having a bilingual tool is very important. Okay. Now, after that, uh, now some of uh, I let me talk to you a bit more about the uh, about our innovative features. But I will not go into details because again, this needs maybe another webinar, and I'll leave it to uh, someone who's more who's more capable of doing that. Okay. So some of the uh, Case Engine's features is we have a project management tool, time management tool. Uh, we have an interactive cal cal calendar 
that will um, okay i'll not talk about it because I, if i start i'll not uh, I'll not stop so interactive calendar a whole email notification system email archive system there is also the reminders uh, set and there is the and our system is self-learning so whenever you do an entry once the next time you do the same entry the system will have already um, automatically comprehended it and they will give it to you immediately and, all, and the um, last and foremost uh, feature for today's uh, webinar but we have much more than what's listed is the timeline view on the timeline view i hope i have a little bit of time just to speak a few um, seconds about the timeline view because i think it's very important so when you go to any in any case or in any um legal matter there's always the box file and if you go to any uh, law firm or, or so you're going to find tons and tons of uh, of uh, the box files around the walls and in the law firm so the timeline view feature is basically for the um, person working in the legal matter to have the whole case from the very beginning from the very first start of the case or of the legal matter until the end of it all in a timeline view manner so and you can obviously um, you can also view it in a chronological up to down or down to up so from the decent to the oldest or from the uh, uh, oldest to the most recent and this way you can always see what happened in the legal matter or the case step by step with all the technicalities or with all the details that happen with the notes with the memorandums with the documents with everything so it's like you have your whole box file for each matter for each client in the form in, in front of you and with just the click of a mouse you can um, you can scroll it okay now what is the change that we're trying to um, to establish or what's the change that we're trying to do okay case engine as i said it's not just we're not just looking to change the industry um in a let's say small scale we're not just looking to um, go to legal departments or uh, in-house legal departments or law firms and tell them, oh, okay, now you can have a semi-virtual law firm. Now you can have your whole uh, um, your whole firm or department online virtually in a dashboard. No, we're here to actually change the whole industry. We're here for your team to be able to be able to work together efficiently, easily. We're here so that the industry the whole industry can be connected internally and externally way easier than how it is now we are here um, to also save your time save your money and it's obviously a given by now that we will enable you or we will give you the option or the ability to work anytime anywhere no matter where your time zone or location is in and to stay focused while doing all of that but also there is another part of why we're here. We are here because of the environment. We are here because we want the legal industry to go paperless. The legal industry happened to be one of the highest industries in terms of the paper usage. And of course, this is harming our environment and our economy as well, if you think about it. There's around 3.5 billion to 7 billion trees cut down each year just to make papers. So imagine if the whole legal industry went paperless, how much are we going to save? And this is something that you need to work on, no matter what your industry or your job title or your or the field that you're working in is, or the field that you're working is in. And of course, apart from that, there is also the um, bigger change that I was talking about earlier, which is moving on from the first phase, the first phase after we've had all the database that's needed to the second phase, which is the artificial intelligence and the um, the machine learning phase. Okay. The last and um, foremost thing that I will say about Case Engine, because I'm sure I bored you already a little bit or a lot, is that Case Engine, again, assures, of course, maximum security and data protection. When it comes to data, we um, we host, uh, we can we give different options of hosting your data. We can host it on our premise, on our cloud, or you can host it in your own server, on premise, on cloud. And we have proudly have passed very rigid security guidelines um, to one of our to a lot of our international um, clients or partners in success, like how we we like to call them. And we follow here is the list of uh, some of the security guidelines that we follow, and that's of course international uh, security guidelines. And like any or like all the other innovative features that we have, we always look to. Um, 
innovate, improve, develop our security as well. Okay. Now that I'm done with the case engine, and of course um, I'm inviting you all to um, to tell us if you would like someone from case engine to talk to you more about the innovative feature, and we would definitely be calling for all of you and much more to come hand by hand. Let's take everyone, like let's all take basically hold our ha hold each other's hands and go towards the future and not ignore the whole legal tech digitalization and automation movement. Because if we do that now, then you, your business or your um, and your business is definitely risking irrelevancy with all due respect and no offense taken, of course. And you, if you want to stay at the forefront of your industry, then that's the way. But with all of that being said, we also know and understand that human interaction will remain the mainstay for businesses. But technology is the tool. It's very evident to us now, it's a given that change is required and we cannot turn our heads, we cannot ignore it. We have to start doing something today. And we have we had to actually start doing something a couple of years ago, but maybe if there is one um, pro or one advantage of the pandemic is that it showed us, it showcased us that we are behind and that we need to run towards the future and catch up basically what we've missed. And one final advice from uh, me to you in terms of the whole going virtual, apart from, of course, needing to choose a portal that's very secure and has maximum security guidelines and has fast just security guidelines, it's also as important or even more important to make sure that you go on with a portal or you go into business with a tool or with a software that's always changing and that has a proper team that will always be developing its innovative features because I mean, in this fast-paced world, uh, in the world that we don't need five years leases anymore, or in the world that um, we cannot really predict what's going to happen next week from what's going to happen in the next year and so on and so forth, we also cannot predict what technological tools will be needed in the future. And hence, having a portal, again, as I said, that is always changing, that's always embedding the clients or the partners in success with, um, in success with comments and trying to always innovate and trying to always update its software, update its features is very important. And I mean, you never get nowadays any technological tool or any um, a device or a gadget without having software updates. And that's the it for today's webinar. Thank you very much, but please don't leave because we're going to have a Q&A. Um, thank you, first of all, for listening um, for listening to me. And I'm sorry if I was repeating myself in a couple of points, if I was redundant in some of them. But once more, I cannot reiterate the importance of us going digital, of all the legal industry, hand by hand, bit by bit, moving their firms to going virtual. And for now, of course, it will remain or stay the hybrid or the quasi-virtual law firm. Now let's have a Q&A session um, and I promise that I will uh, break all the uh, norms and traditions of just answering any question and I will make sure that if I don't know the answer to any question I'll just say I don't know. So yes let me now check the question box and see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hello do you, can we have the presentation through email? Yes of course. Um, it's already in the handout tool or the handout bar that's there. You will find this presentation. You'll also find a brief video on Case Engine, and you will find a survey that you're all um, uh, requested, please, to uh, kindly fill it because your feedback and knowing what you think of going digital and of the whole virtual law firm movement is very, very important to us, of course. So there will be a very short survey. It shouldn't take more than two minutes. Um, do you think virtual law? Okay. Do you think virtual law firms will replace traditional law firms in the next ten years? Um, as I said earlier, of course. Thank you for the question. And as I said earlier, uh, one can never predict what's going to happen in the next week. Next week, from what's going to happen in the next year, from what's going to happen in the next ten years. But it is already a given, and all the um, facts or all what's happening now is driving us towards. Um, towards thinking that it might, but anyway, whether it will be or not, whether we're gonna be, we're gonna remain quasi or hybrid for maybe the next 50 years, we need digitalization and automation. 
And uh, before I go on with the questions, because there's a couple more questions, um, and for the sake of time, we just have five more minutes. So whoever we don't answer the question now, I of course apologize for that. And I will, uh, we will be emailing you the answer as well. Okay. Uh, thanks for all this information. What's the major condition for starting a virtual law firm? Okay, by starting, do you mean starting from scratch or um, or do you mean quasi? I mean, there isn't a major condition per se, but there are a couple of steps or a couple of things. Of course, there's the whole checking the um, license requirements and I'm not the right person to answer something on that, of course. I'll leave it to the authorities or to the people in hand. So that's me saying, um, not that I don't know, I know a little bit about it, but I wouldn't want to talk about something that's left for the authorities. But there isn't a major condition. It's literally just maybe um, going on and going along and doing it. Maybe that would be the um, main major condition of starting a virtual law firm. What about the cost? Okay, so um, again, the cost, it depends. Um, but if starting a fully virtual law firm wouldn't cost a lot of course but again this is not something that's in my expertise so i would like to leave this to the people who are um who know more about it but we we shall be emailing you also uh something on that and thank you for the question of course um sorry. okay to which size low firms in case engine directed towards is it suitable for boutique or small low firms that's actually a very good question thank you for asking it yes definitely it is um, I mean, I don't want to get into the pricing schemes because, but our pricing scheme is actually very low, uh, and we have we happen to also have bundles with catered or or um, uh, amendable features depending on the size of your law firm and depending on your work. So we have packages such as basic, um, plus or premium, and when it comes to um, the whole um, the whole pricing or the whole features or the whole training or so on and so forth we want every single and not just and when i say we it's not me it's actually the management uh, the ceo himself wants each and every legal every person in the legal firm uh, legal department whether it's a in-house legal department whether it's a law firm no matter what the size is no matter what the company is he and we, the management and the team, want every single person because we know that in, in order to have the movement going and actually go to the second phase, we need to make sure that all or most of the market is with us, is with us in the first phase. And is, is again, as I said, taking our hands and taking us a bit by bit and hand in hand into doing that, into uh, the second phase, which is AI. So we, Mr. Ahab, we welcome everyone and we will be emailing you for sure about getting in contact and getting in touch. Okay, who's the person that will be in charge of entering all the information and case papers, as well as clients' data to the virtual law firm cloud? Is there any easy way to transfer all uh, such data? Okay, thank you very much, um, Moza, for asking such a question. It is actually a very important question as well. Um, it is very a very easy process. We do it in-house, so we, can, uh, we will assure, or the training, uh, we have a whole training team uh, that will assure you that all the data in your law firm, whether it's the old data or the newer ones, will it's all uh, transformed in a cloud, whether it's on your premise or it's on ours. So it's a very easy step and we're responsible of doing it, or our team, training team, is, and along with our IT team, of course. Okay, thanks for your time. One question, how Case Engine program supports billings and invoices in general? Accounting, is, is, it, is it available now? Thank you for your question and uh, thank you for your time uh, that you took out of your day to listen to me. Yes, we support billings and we have the whole invoicing system, but again, for the sake of time, uh, someone from our sales team will be getting in touch with you shortly, um, starting from Monday, and they will answer um, your question and they'll give you a brief, but yes, we have a billing in uh, process already uh, and we do invoices and so on and so forth. Okay, Thank how you, does Aya, a virtual uh, law firm will deal with clients, especially mainly engagement? Okay, so as I said, in a quasi or a hybrid virtual law firm, you have a bit of both. You have a physical um, traditional law firm, bricks and mortar office, but you also have the, um, the full one, okay? So you have the full, um, the full, um, you have the, the, the part that's virtual. So 
other than the video conferencing, which is the tool for communication, and the chatbot that's in your interactive website, you can always also have a physical meeting. But in, again, the pandemic in the past couple of months, it has already told us and taught us that video conferencing would do the job. And I'll also get someone from our team to um, talk to you about that. Okay, um, there is a lot of other questions. Uh, so for the sake of time, okay, I'm getting here a very special request from one of our dearest clients. Okay, this is okay, this is exciting, and this is not planned for. Um, and this is something that I'd probably not be able to. Okay, wait, let's see. We have a very special um, guest with us here. He is one of our clients, he's, he's from a company that's one of our clients. And um, he and the company uh, that I'm referring to is our partners in success. We actually work hand in hand in a lot of things, and we also have an innovative committee, by the way. Uh, with the whole research and development uh, department. So let me give him the mic. Okay, Mr. Saleh, just one second. Okay, just give me one second. I'll give uh, Mr. Saleh the mic. Hello. Hi there. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, Aya, indeed, for the presentation skills. It was a wonderful presentation provided to us. Uh, my name is Saleh Kayali. I'm the head of litigation and dispute resolution at one of the telecom operators in, in the UAE. Uh, as an in-house counsel, we are very much in. Uh, uh, we are very much uh, responsible for our cases, and we always follow a very strict procedure in terms of follow-up of our cases uh, in the court and with the, with the law firms externally. So uh, uh, I have been using Case Engine for the past couple of years, and my experience with Case Engine as a software and with the management of Case Engine as a team is very brilliant indeed. Uh, the good thing of the team at Case Engine is that they listen and they execute uh, immediately. We have delivered uh, several ideas and amendments to the system, and they have been uh, welcomed by the management at Case Engine and all of them were executed in a timely manner, which have been reflected on the overall success of, of my team and uh, the litigation team in my, my, my company. Uh, uh, thank you very much for, for, for this presentation once again, and I would like to encourage every one of you just to use the solution for some period of time, and you will realize that it's a, it's a must for every law firm and for every in-house legal team. Uh, once again, thank you, Aya, for, for, for the presentation and looking forward to deal with you more in the future. We can't hear you, Aya. The mic is with me. Thank you very, very much, Mr. Saleh. Um, I mean, what you just said is, uh, is literally a crown to be worn by us, and we're very, very glad um, that this is how you feel. And of course, um, you and uh, other very um, respectful clientele, you are our partners in success and you are Case Engine. You are, um, you are the reason why we're uh, basically doing what we're doing. And we hope to have a lot more. Um, and as I said, to take our hand and start doing the digitalization, which is just the first step towards a bigger, much bigger step in the future. Thank you very much, Thank Mr. You. Saleh. And, um, this has honestly made my whole day and weekend, um, and this is uh, such a perfect way to basically end this webinar. Uh, so thank you very much. Okay, so with that, let's um, end the webinar. For the sake of time, we've already been five minutes um, more than the time planned. There is um, a lot of other questions. I very much apologize for not being able to answer all of them. Uh, but also assure you that we will be sending you uh, separate emails with the question and the answer for it. And for um, anyone who we see or feel that their question could be answered by uh, this, one of our sales team approaching them, we will also do that for sure. And uh, please, um, there is also a QR code if you want to do an appointment, but kindly please, uh, you will find the survey in the handout and it will appear after I uh, I um, close the webinar. 
uh, it's just going to take one to two minutes. Uh, your response is very much needed and it's very appreciated. So please take the survey. And you'll find again this presentation and a brief video on Case Engine in the handout uh, for your reviewing and reference as well. Thank you very much uh, for listening to me. And I hope this was um, useful from any uh, point or any scale or any way. And I am looking forward to speaking to you again in uh, future webinars. Thank you and have a great weekend. Bye.